I don't know. Suffragette City is a driving song. It's one of those songs, as soon as you hear the intro, you know it's going to really take you and get your head banging if you want, get your feet tapping, get you driving along. It's a motorway song in a way. You can actually put it in and you can hear it going down the motorway. And it's a great rhythmic rock and roll song. The drumming on Suffragette City is very simple, but it was get it was finding a groove that that was like streamlined, that wasn't your normal rock and roll beat. Um, it was it was moving. You had to get sort of real motion into it. Bowie was actually quite a mean saxophone player. He played he played sax in a few bands uh, in the in his David Jones years. Um, but I, I think the sound of it is great. I think it captures that era of rock very, very well. Uh, it owes a lot to the Stones, uh, in my humble opinion, um, but it just works. It's, it's simplicity and, and the best things, the best rock things ever are the, are the most simple. What a great ending to the song. Wham, bam, thank you, man, bang, and then they're back into it. That to me is what a rock and roll record should be about. Oh, wham, bam, thank you, man. Another really good example of Bowie's ability to use the, the technical uh, side of, of songwriting is on a song like Rock and Roll Suicide, which again is basically written in C major, which is a key you would expect uh, somebody setting out on their writing career to use. Time takes a cigarette, puts it in your mouth, Pull on your finger, then another finger, then your cigarette While the wall to wall is calling, it lingers but still you forget Oh, 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 oh. you're a rock and roll suicide but suddenly, on the chorus, Bobby wants to change the mood. He wants to introduce this air of theatricality and the sort of flavour of the West End stage. And he does that by shifting key, just as we start the chorus, into G flat major. It's a typical dramatic uh, flourish, which you would, you would expect to find in musicals like Les Miserables. And Bowie knows that this is the point that he wants to suddenly change the whole mood and the whole style of the piece as we come into the chorus. So, so he modulates, he changes key from C to G flat major, which is an unusual key. But what it does is it introduces this, this air of theatricality into the proceedings. It's wonderfully well done. Now the ship breaks the starling As we stumble across the room But the day breaks instead So you hurry home don't let the sunlight blast your shadow Don't let the milk flow bind your mind There's no natural, religiously unkind Oh no love, you're not alone You're watching yourself but you're too unfair You got your head on time for love Pretty far from only No matter 
Let me put my arms around your head Gee, it's hot, let's go to bed Don't forget to turn on the light Driving Saturday, every time I hear it, just reminds me of two things, the Rocky Horror Show and Back to the Future. Because it's got that 1950s B-movie feel to it. It's doo-wop. It's cinematic in a way it's describing itself as well. Driving Saturday is another one of my favourites, actually. Um, I think it it's just a futuristic rock song that that isn't pretentious. It's just, uh, I think that track's gonna see, we'll see more of that track in the future. I think it's been passed over for some reason. <laughs> it's got that great feel about Remember When, even though Bowie wasn't part of Remember When because he was living in England. We didn't have <laughs> drive-in cinemas or anything like that. He was talking about America. But it's America that has a certain glamour and nostalgia. It's America a lot of people like to think existed in the 1950s when rock and roll was first starting to come through. It also proved that, of course, he wasn't just this, you know, rock monster guy. Bowie also loved black music you know I mean he was he insisted on being booked onto soul train in when they were promoting young Americans he was the first white artist who'd ever been booked on soul train in America classic Bowie he just didn't ever operate by anyone else's parameters or rules driving Saturday um, features something that Bowie's quite fond of unexpected chord changes into the chorus it's a 12-8 that starts in A and rather than going to D or something like that or staying in A for the chorus it drops down to G which is a drop, but it's a lift musically at the same time. When I came down to London to join Bowie, I had a full beard. I mean, I had a full beard. It was down to here, right? Because I was in, I don't know, I'd come up with the blues era and Fleetwood Mac and uh, the Beatles and all that. Everybody had beards, you know. And it was getting to the end of that era, you know. It was about the time I shaved it off anyway. But uh, and Mick and Woody were clean shaved and Bowie was clean shaved. And I kept looking at them and I kept thinking, like, well, I look just so odd against these two. I'm just ain't going to match in here. So what I decided to do was I thought, well, I'll shave the middle out. So I shaved the middle out, all right? And I left the tash and the sideburns. And I, left, I had that for a while. And I thought, no, nah, that looks stupid. So I shaved the tash off, right? And it was just at the time when we were just, we'd just done Ziggy and we were getting the image together. And I thought, I thought well, I'll shave the sideburns off as well. And then Angie Bowie says, don't you shave them off? They're part of your image now. <laughs> so I was left with them. And then she, of course, she sprayed them silver because she had this silver tender spray that she went on spraying everybody with. And she got hold of me and that was <laughs> I loved the, the weird um, doo-woppy backing vocals. The, the concept of the concept of the song is probably more current for nowadays than it was when it was written. Um, it's a good song. It features some great guitar work, some great guitar riffs, and some very interesting piano by Mike Garson, who has a totally different style of playing to uh, Rick Wakeman. It's a much more basic, almost solid style, if you like, but it works very, very well on this track. The drumming was, um, again, a, a simplistic approach. It wasn't. Uh, it was just really let let the arrangement and everything else ride on top of this this groove you've set up, um, and it, you can't really break it down or, or mess about with it. It was again the stable point, you know. It's the B movie element, going to the cinema and watching the creature from the Black Lagoon, or something very similar. It does have that feel, and it's the same reason that I always cite the Rocky Horror Show because the Rocky Horror Show has the same feel and Bowie did it around the same period with a song and I'd love to see a movie made for Drive-In Saturday, that would be very interesting. It's a